Hey everybody, welcome to the lesson here at THSS Technology. Uh, today we're going to dive back into Godot uh, with a few different Godot scripting lessons. Today we're going to learn how to create a simple modification to our player script so we can uh, sprint in our game, as well as we'll add a double jump or triple jump feature, however many jumps you'd like to put into your game. So let's get started. Uh, so right now if I go to play my game, you know, everything's working good and I can use the left and right arrow keys to kind of move around. Uh, but I mean, this isn't 1995 and I don't really want to be controlling my characters with the left and right arrow keys. So let's quickly fix that. So we're going to go to project, project settings. We're going to go into our input map and we're going to add some new input actions into here. We're going to add one called left. We're going to add one called right. We're going to add one called jump. Okay. And then for my left input action key, I'm going to hit plus and I'm going to hit the A key there. And then I'll go to my right, hit the plus and hit the D key. And then for jump, let's hit the space bar there. Perfect. And uh, now we can go with our uh, player selected here. We can go into our script tab and let's kind of fix this. So instead of the UI accept, let's put in jump here. It's going to recognize jump because it is reading from the input map. For UI left, we'll just do left. And for UI right, we're going to type in right. Let's control S to save that. Let's go back and test our game now. So now I can use the A and D keys. No problem. Feels a little bit better. We're just as good as Thresh. Perfect. Okay, so let's keep going. So I want to add a sprint feature to my game. So actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my input map here and uh, let's add a new action. Let's call it sprint. Okay. And uh, for that we're going to bind it to the left shift key. I mean, you could call this action uh, shift if you wanted to, but we'll leave it sprint. It'll be default for our game. So we've now created a new input action because um, we're doing action just pressed up here. And we're gonna kind of create that for our sprint effect. Now, I'm gonna go back up to there and talk about these two features right here. We're gonna call these constants. That's what the C-O-N-S stands for, constant. And uh, so this constant controls our speed in our game. So if I double click on speed, you can see speed, speed is used here and here. And this contents, constant is called jump velocity, which controls how high you jump on the Y axis. Uh, now, uh, anything, anytime you're using the Y axis, it is inverted. That's just a very old CRT monitor thing, uh, but we're not gonna really worry about that right now. But with constants, whenever you're using constants and you're naming constants, by default, you can't change it. That's why it's called a constant. I wanna be able to change this number. I wanna be able to change my speed number, maybe through power-ups or the shift key. And I wanna be able to change my jump velocity for the same thing. Maybe I'm you know, hitting a, a trampoline or something like that, um, or, uh, or I'm picking up another power-up that makes me jump higher. So we want to be able to change these numbers. So I'm going to change these from a constant to a var, a variable. So variable, as you know from the definition, can be changed in your game. All right, perfect. So I've created a system now here. We have a variable for speed, but I'm actually going to make a new variable now, and I'm going to call this uh, sprint speed. And we're going to make our sprint speed equal to 600. And we'll designate it as a float by doing zero. Now, you might be wondering why these are letters of lowercase and these are capitalized. That's just uh, best practice when you're using content, uh, uh, constants. You capitalize everything. And when you use variables, you do not. So let's just uh, use best practice here uh, and uh, velocity. All right, I can totally spell. I know how to spell. Uh, velocity. There we go. Perfect. And uh, now the problem is if we've changed it here, we're going to get errors here because now it doesn't know what these are. So let's just correct that there. And then this one right here. And just double clicking on a word is a really quick way to select it. Just a quick double click and it highlights that. And then it shows you everything that is using that same term. So good little bit of info there. So now we have a new variable called sprint speed, which is double our regular speed. So now we've got to create a situation where we use our sprint speed. Okay. So let's kind of go down here and I'll put it after my, uh, my movement commands here. And I'm going to hit, oops, not that. I'm going to hit enter a few times. And now really important, we have to always be thinking of the parent-child relationship when we're working in Godot, and these indents indicate if it's a child. So right now, if I was to start typing, this would be a child of the else command. Okay, uh, So we want to make sure that we are going backspace uh, to start a new situation here. So we're going to do a, uh, we're going to make a comment. We're going to say uh, this handles the sprint. Okay. And we're going to start off with a if statement. So we're going to say if input, uh, input is anytime you're sending information into a computer. So if input dot is 
action. So we have a couple here for is action, okay? We have is action pressed, is action just pressed, okay? Um, basically, we want is, is action pressed. So that means you are pressing and holding the key, okay? Just pressed is when you just want to tap it. So is action just pressed, and we're gonna say, we're gonna use our sprint action that we made there, okay? Now it's giving me an error, and the reason why is uh, we have to use a colon to end our if statement there, okay? So now we can go down and now we can put our condition for what is happening if our action is pressed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our speed which uh, controls how fast we move. And we're gonna make our speed equal to our sprint speed, okay? So uh, we've created a if statement here that if you're pressing the sprint key, which is shift, we set that up, make your speed, which is controlled up here by how fast you move, equal to your sprint speed, which is set to 600. So I'm gonna press control S and let's go test that out. Left and right, looking good, but I press hold down shift, I'm moving twice as fast. However, we have a problem here. I'm not going back to my normal speed when I let go of shift. I've left go of shift here, but I'm still moving at my sprint speed velocity. So we need to uh, modify our script there to fix that. So I'm gonna press enter, and then I'm gonna press backspace, and we're gonna make an else statement up here, okay? Um, oops, sorry, with our else statement, we wanna make sure we're ending with a colon there. Uh, I've still got C sharp and unity in my head. And with our else statement, there's a couple different ways we could handle this. We could take our speed variable, and make it back equal to 300 if we wanted to. And this will work, right? This will always work. Um, and uh, you know, I'll show you real quick that this, you know, this is a perfectly fine way of fixing it. So I'm holding down shift and I'm moving at 600. And if I let go of shift, I'm moving back at 300 speed. However, I do wanna control this with a variable. I don't want to be constantly using and typing in numbers and floats uh, whenever I'm wanting to make changes here. So we're gonna add one more variable. And the variable we're gonna add is we're gonna call it default speed, okay? And we're gonna make our default speed equal to 300, okay? So speed is how fast you are currently going in the game, okay? And when we press shift, it's taking our speed and putting it to the sprint speed. But if we're not pressing the shift key, I'm gonna put my speed back to my default speed, okay? So now we're gonna be able to go back to our 300 speed any given time by using our default. There's our sprint, there's our default, there's our sprint, there's our default. Perfect, all right, looking good. So let's start talking about double jump functionality now, okay? So uh, for double jump, uh, we don't need to add too, too many more features here. Um, so let's go back into our script and kind of get started on this. So I've been separating my movement uh, variables from my jumping variables. And uh, we're gonna do this by adding a few new variables here to our jumping variables, okay? So we're gonna create one called max jumps, okay? This is gonna be a variable that's gonna control how many times can you jump at the most. And I'm gonna say right now two. But if you wanted to have a triple jump or a quadruple jump, you could change that number to what you ever want, okay? And then we're gonna create a variable that's gonna control how many times have we currently jumped. So we're gonna call this our jump count. And this is gonna be a counter um, that is going to control how many times we are, have jumped at the moment, okay? So uh, we'll start it by default at zero, um, but we're gonna say we're gonna have a maximum of two jumps in our game, okay? So this adds the gravity here, and this is what handles our jumping, okay? So right now with jumping, we have, if you're pressing the jump key and you're on the floor, it's going to uh, move us on the Y, give us velocity in the Y equal to our jump velocity. Makes sense, okay? Um, but we wanna add a, you know, a, another condition here. So we could say, and, so we're setting you know, three conditions right now for our jump statement. Hopefully it likes three, we'll have to see here. And what we're gonna say is our jump count less than our max jumps. Okay, let's see if it likes adding that third condition. It does perfectly. But now, there's gonna be a problem here and you might see this. Uh, but right now, so we're saying that if you're pressing the jump key and you're on the floor and your jump counts is more than your max jumps, then it'll let you jump, okay? But this is gonna be the sticking point here. I don't always wanna be jumping on the floor, right? But the whole point of double jumping is you can double jump uh, in the air. So I'm actually gonna take out that second condition there, that middle condition. Now we're just gonna say, if you press the jump key and your jump count is less than your max jumps, okay? So let's just do a quick little test, see if that works. 
Okay, well, I can jump endlessly now, um, but I'm not able to do just, just the double jump, okay? So we need to add a, another feature into this, okay? So, you know, we're saying, you know, our max has to be less than our max jumps, but we've done nothing in our code that controls or adds to that. It's also basically always just gonna be a, a zero for our jump count, right? Our jump count is always just setting to zero. So what we're gonna do here, after we add our jump velocity, we're gonna take our jump count and we're gonna take with our jump count and we're going to plus one to it. And to add to you just go plus equals. Um, so we're gonna add one to our jump count every time we hit the jump command. So let's go test that out, see if that works. All right, one, two. Awesome, I can't jump any more than twice. But now I can't also jump at all anymore, okay? So now you might have kind of guessed here, the issue is we're adding to our jump count and that's working, but we are never resetting our jump count, okay? Um, and we're gonna do that uh, by adding another if statement, okay? So we're gonna add it just up here, kind of below the adding the gravity. And we're gonna say if is on floor, so um, if your player is on the floor, let's do a colon, take your jump count and make it equal to zero, okay? So anytime that your player is on the floor, we're set your jump counter to zero. And then every time you're jumping, you can add one to your jump count. If you jump once in the air, your jump count will then be at two. And then this won't activate anymore because your jump count will be it's no longer less than your max jumps until you hit the floor again. So let's just do a quick little save here. Let's do a play. Jump once, everything's good. I can keep jumping one time, but one, two, can't jump anymore. But if I'm back on the floor, I can jump the second time. All right, now I haven't built my level to really take advantage of the double jump. Oh, yep, yeah, never mind. I can. So I can get up there with a double jump. Not up there, though. We'd have to add a triple jump for that. And it's very easy to add a triple jump. We can go into our max jumps and set that to three. Go back and play our game now. One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. So you could have power-ups that uh, manipulate this max jump counter kind of however you like. Awesome. So that was a pretty long lesson today. And uh, we hope you all enjoyed it, found something useful, and we will see you all later.